Good morning to one and all. Uh, I'm Dr. Priyanka and uh, today's lecture topic is Tooth Supported Complete. Okay, coming to the learning outcome. So at the end of the lecture, you should be able to discuss the indication, contraindication, advantage, disadvantage of overdenture, uh, explain the concepts, concepts of overdenture, summarize the overdenture attachments such as bar and start attachments. These both are the most important ones. Okay, coming to the definition according to the GPT, that is the glossary of prosthodontic uh, terms, GPT. Okay, so it uh, it's a dental prosthesis that covers and is partially supported by natural teeth, tooth, root, or a dental implant. Okay, so it's also known as a hybrid denture or tooth supported complete denture. So you can see a coping with and the attachment on top this is a stud attachment okay so why do we anyway have to make over dentures so over dentures can reduce the impact of the rrr that is the residual with resorption loss of occlusion stability loss of aesthetics and compromised mastication so uh, Van Was et al. in 1993 reported that RRR in groups treated with immediate overdenture was less than compared to uh, patients treated with immediate complete denture groups. So as you can see, there are many, many more studies which prove that overdentures preserve the ridge. Okay, so there are various advantages to an overdenture. So basically, it maintains the ridge integratory, and um, rather than having an unsupported denture, is worn. Uh, so uh, it actually results from a presumed uh, improved occlusal stress distribution. So basically, this means is um, even when you have two teeth present in the arch, it's going to have uh, some stress distribution even on those teeth. So it's going to be a little less compared to a com complete denture, which is fully edentulous, the arch, which is fully edentulous. Okay. So uh, the second advantage is the denture stability and even retention. So particularly in the mandible, which can be enhanced. So Usually, this is done uh, most commonly in the mandible. Why? Because um, mandibular teeth, the, the mandibular arch resorbs a little faster than the maxilla. And if teeth are remaining in the mandibular arch, uh, specific teeth, usually abutments preferred, are the canines, also the premolar. So if these are preserved, they are there which will provide stability and retention to the denture okay so coming to the third advantage that is a patient subjective perception regarding a retained natural feeling uh so basically the patient feels that you know few of my teeth are still in the mouth which translate into you know an occlusal awareness binding force which is consistent and proper neuromuscular control Right? So rather than having uh, no teeth in the mouth, right? So um, this technique is a viable and simple alternative to complete denture, th denture therapy. And it is frequently self-reported as providing immense physiologic, uh, sorry, psychologic uh, support for patients. So it's also like a psychological benefit to the patient. Coming to the disadvantage, Patient's oral hygiene also plays an important role um, in maintaining uh, the apartment teeth. Okay, so an oral hygiene also is a thing which has to be maintained. Some patients cannot maintain it and then the apartment starts failing and then there is a problem. So dental caries and periodontal problem can occur in the apartment teeth which can lead to the failure of the treatment. Treatment of the apartment teeth or regular maintenance would be expensive and time consuming so there were cases a few cases in our department and the patient refused uh, to preserve the teeth because uh, they would have to pay for the root canal treatment and then for the coping and then for the denture so yeah 
um, there was one case which came uh, he already had coping done from somewhere else we created a ordenture on top of that yeah uh, so coming to the indications, it divided into group 1, 2. So group 1 uh, comprises of patients with few remaining teeth that may be healthy or with reversible periodontal disease and which is coronally intact or which is malpositioned or morphologically compromised. This is the treatment is mostly straightforward. It can be done. Second group uh, has like a diagnosis of so-called mutilated or severely compromised dentition. These patients uh, appear to be heading in the edentulous direction and their treatment is defined by the complexity, expense and time implication of the intervention. So selected extractions will need to be carried out and keeping in mind that the retention of the teeth with good alveolar support will preserve the bone at the selected sites. Okay, so coming to the contraindications, so yes, uh, a high high caries index case um, is not suitable for such a treatment. Poor oral hygiene patient is not suitable. Poor prognosis of an abutment teeth, obviously not suitable because we do need proper abutments. Reduce interarch space. Um, things can be dealt with here. Uh, you know, with uh, giving non coping, and we'll we'll read about it later in the next slide. So. Uh, but still, ideally should be contraindicated, um, which has severe undercuts, the patient's uh, sufficient um, attachment, gingiva are not present. So uh, it will lead to complications and failure. Okay, so coming to the general considerations. Uh, so we are supposed to maintain the periodontal health. So periodontal health, there is a redu reduction in a crown root ratio. And then also there is a success of endodontic therapy, which has to play a role. Then there is this adaptation and coverage of the denture bearing area. So in short, these are the procedures we do. Okay, so you have to take out the take care of the PDL. You're supposed to reduce the crown to at least just you know remaining two mm. You also have to do an endodontic therapy before you do that, and then you can take a support of that abutment and create an over denture into four different types discussing in the coming slides okay so patient selection yes possibility of fix or removal partial denture uh you know can be considered uh condition of the abutment teeth has to be um proper and it, it can be such an abutment which can be managed uh age of the patient uh, can be considered as well so uh and how much the teeth is how it's basically related to the abutment teeth um how well is the abutment teeth uh, maintained by the patient okay coming to the selection of the abutment teeth so in over denture the a very important uh, thing is that uh, it, it lies basically on the abutment teeth whichever is present so if it's the canine or the premolar uh, any one or any two of the teeth Okay, so usually bilaterally is preferred for sure. So, okay, coming to selection of abutment teeth. So first we will, we have two consideration here. So first we are looking at the periodontal consideration and the mobility status. Abutment teeth or root supported, uh, sorry, abutment tooth or root surrounded by healthy per periodontal tissue. So again, there has to be a healthy PDL Otherwise, if you preserve the teeth and later it leads to mobility and attachment loss, there's going to be a problem and our treatment will fail. So second is compromised tooth with good treatment prognosis, even when horizontal bone loss is present. So uh, even then, if the uh, abutment teeth has good prognosis, even after horizontal bo bone loss, uh, still it can be considered. A vertical bone loss grade 2 and uh, grade 3 definitely are contraindicated because this is like a, a severe mobility which is present which will definitely uh, you know fall off uh, in the coming time so definitely not indicated okay so slight tooth mobility per se is not a contraindication 
uh, because of a favorable change in the crown roof ratio. Okay, so grade one mobility still can be considered. That is a good news and. Uh, by doing these treatments and cutting down the crown, um, preparing the crown down in the abutment and, uh, you know, creating um, changes in the crown roof ratio, we can still stabilize the teeth, surprisingly, yes. So it can work, uh, grade two, grade three, vertical bone loss, okay. So coming to the second uh, selection criteria is the abutment location, uh, canines and premolars on mandibular ridge as this site is more vulnerable to RR. So basically canines are the last longest teeth. Uh, so it has the longest root. It is the strongest teeth and it's the last one to fall off. So these are the very important criteria of choosing a canine. Usually canines will be present. So, um, and they'll be able to bear the load. So, and also the premolars come next. So these two teeth uh, can be considered and the site are more vulnerable to uh, uh, residual ridge resorption, okay? So uh, this applies to maxilla as well, although incisors are also frequently used, but um, uh, not really. I mean, <laughs> I have not seen and heard much. Uh, usually canines, premolars, and a mandibular arch usually is an ideal preferred uh, location and the arch. So. Uh, yes, but definitely given in the book. So yes, it can be uh, at least one tooth per quadrant. Yes, so uh, usually should be bilateral, which is 100% better than having it unilateral as there will be unequal force distribution. Okay, and abutment teeth should not be um, uh, at least uh, like a few mm away as uh, they do not hamper the soft tissue health. So uh it should have a proper distance so uh, it can be maintained better. Okay, so coming to the types. So these are the types we're going to co cover. So non-coping abutment, non-coping abutment with endodontic therapy, coping abutment, coping abutment with endodontic therapy, then abutment teeth with some form of attachment. Okay, so uh, first of all, the types of attachment. So these are at least uh, uh, these are 10 to 12 um, uh, different uh, names and types of attachment. The most important, which you all should know, are stud attachment, bar attachment, and if anything else, magnet attachment. So you can read those. Okay, uh, at least know the names. So coming to the stud attachment, so these are the simplest ones. Uh, stud means a ball and um, so what happens is, yes, so there is a male and a female component, the male component and the female component. So the male component goes in the female component. Female component is like a pickup impression which you take on, on the denture. You place an O-ring. These can be of metal. These can be uh, of silicon. And uh, you take an impression and you just uh, place the ring here. And uh, you just take a pickup and it settles down the acrylic around the rings. And... Uh, that's how it works. So, of course, you have to first create, um, you know, a, a space here for the rings and uh, you can embed the O-rings and uh, with the acrylic and just uh, place it in the, den place it on the male component, the studs and take an impression and that's how it works. Okay. So the male components usually attach to the metal coping. Yes. Cemented on the prepared abutment. Okay. So same thing, female component is embedded into the fitting surface of the word denture. Example is the Zika, Zest, Schroterman, uh, Gerber, okay? So these are some few. One flaw in this, uh, not one flaw, um, one indication in bar attachments that you have to have very good inter or space, which usually patients don't have. So stud attachment is more commonly used rather than bar attachment, okay? So coming to... Uh, non-coping abutment in this procedure remaining teeth were merely reshaped to eliminate undercuts and reuse vertical height so these are not uh, endodontically treated treated okay so there is so there so um, just a little bit eliminated and reduced in the vertical height to maintain the interarch distance minimal perforation um and uh, yes pulp is still vital and uh, so you know 
you reduce it only till you do not expose the pulp and so there the teeth is not sensitive so usually these things don't work on the other hand, this works though. Non coping abutment is endodontically treated um, therapy. Usually, it's always like this. They are never not treated endodontically, okay? So, these are the ones which are successful, okay? So, one also with the coping and endodontic tra treatment or non coping with the endodontic treatment, okay? So, we we'll talk about this for now. So, indicated when interarch space is normal and that for sufficient space to be created adequate amount of tooth reduction is necessary so you can see this is the ridge this is the tooth and this is a filling so of course uh so book i've taken it from uh, they of course before they used to do amalgam fillings now you will might do composite fillings so uh that's how it, and it, it looks hardly there but it's it's like 2 mm above the ridge okay so after the tooth is endodontically treated amalgam restoration is placed polished and uh, you can just make an overdenture on top of this. Okay. Uh, coming to the co coping abutments. So, <clears throat> sorry. So, uh, these are the abutments and it has copings on top. So, what it does, it reduces the sensitivity. Uh, yes, it doesn't require endodontic treatment because you have already covered it with the crown uh, coping. Uh, again, this is kind of uh, debatable here. Okay, then the crown ra root ratio is relatively higher, definitely, because you have restored it again with the crown. Uh, should have adequate bony support and a good periodontal health. So, of course, the surrounding of the teeth has to be sound and good, uh, which is the periodontal health. Okay, so these are two types, short coping, long coping. So, 2 to 3 mm and 6, 5 to 8 mm. Okay. Coming to the coping abutments with endodontic therapy, so these are also there. So this is an example of coping and the uh, endodontic therapy or the post placement done. So instead of an amalgam plug, a coping is placed. This is the coping placed on the abutment teeth. Coping is used to prevent the recurrent caries and of course this hypersensitivity. Post serves as an um, additional retention. So it's like a post with a coping okay so if you like take it out from the tooth that's how uh, it's going to look so uh, margins of the coping are uh, kept slightly short so it allows easy uh, you know repair of the margins and uh, you can uh, uh, debride the tooth uh, if required you know for any um, plaque deposits okay so for the preparation here, you can see that the 2 mm is left. Uh, this is the pulp cavity. And of course, uh, they've not seen. Okay, so the like the, uh, what do you call it? The uh, post is placed. A uh, uh, little bit uh, endo treatment is done. That is the RC treatment remains. And um, uh, the above is uh, placed by... Um, uh, sorry, the above, um, so endo treatment, and then of course, you know how to prepare a post. You put a post and then you prepare the tooth, you leave it 2 mm above the ridge, and uh, then you see that there's a tooth, and uh, this is like the occlusal view you see, and uh, this is the um, internal view which you see. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so this is the procedure is done. Okay. Uh, so how do we take an impression with the coping? Uh, just put an impression material. You can just take an impression like that, okay? With a light body, all right? And you can see that the copings will embed. And yes, this will give some... There will be retention due to the undercuts and the surface area. All right, so coming to the summary, uh, guys. So oral dentures provide substantial benefit two of the patient in terms of ridge preservation and retention patients should be educated regarding the provisional nature of the treatment and uh, the inevitable need to progress to complete dentures abutment selection is vitally important in success of this treatment modality though the cost is a problem <laughs> yeah especially while using attachment so yes uh, there were a few patients 
who were there, which I had seen, but couldn't get convinced because of the cost. But then, yes, there are a lot of advantages like you have seen and it has been practiced and it, they are used. Okay. So thank you so much for patient listening. And uh, uh, so I will tell you the book I used for this topic was... Um, uh, it, it the name is uh, Zarb, so the author is Zarb and uh, Bolender, twelfth edition. So the name is uh, Personality Treatment for Edentulous Patients. Um, you can refer to that book. Uh, you can come and see me if you have any questions. I'm always in Polyclinic Three in the Prosto uh, Clinic. Um, come and ask me any questions. And uh, guys, uh, the this topic is basically a complete denture. It comes under complete denture section. Uh, it of course uh, it's like a miscellaneous topic in the complete denture but yes it belongs there okay so for any questions please come and see me and do read the topic thank you